and this is section 5.6, Foundations of Math 20. We're talking about statistics, um, and today we're talking about confidence intervals. Now, I asked you to look over these notes and to write down uh, the definitions for some of these things, so we'll talk about them briefly. Uh, af yeah, um, I think it was you guys, wasn't it? After the, uh, if you were done the assignment, I asked you to get started on that for tomorrow when you got done that assignment, so either in class or whatever. Because there's a lot of uh, definitions and stuff that we won't take the time to uh, write down uh, during this class so much. You can, but you'll be busily writing while I'm talking, so if you haven't written down already, you're a step ahead. So um, we're talking about when, we, when d uh, data, when uh, statistics are reported, there's uh, something called a margin of error, there's something called a confidence interval, and there's something called a confidence level. So we want to differentiate between those three things here today. And I think what we'll do is we'll just kind of go over, uh, let's do this uh, example one, okay? So in the uh, question, it says this, a telephone survey of 600 randomly selected people was conducted in an urban area. The survey determined that 76% of people from 18 to 34 years of age have a social networking account. The results are accurate within plus or minus four percentage points, or percent points, you'll, you'll hear it's percentage points most often, 19 times out of 20. Okay, so there's a lot of things in there, so if we unpack that sort of stuff here, um, this right here would be your stated, uh, um, your percentage, so how many people, what percentage would have this, that would be your stated percentage. The margin of error, okay, and I think, the, yeah, so this is from the same question. So the margin of error, that's the first thing we want to look at. That's the possible difference between the estimate of the value you're trying to determine uh, for the sample and the population. So what this is meaning is that when we take a sample of people, we're obviously not asking every single person in the population, right? We're taking a sample. So with surveys and stuff like that, very often it's not possible to ask everyone the question, right? Do you have a social networking account? So they take a sample, and all, all these surveys are taking a sample. So there obviously there is a margin of error because the people that you sampled, and hopefully it's just a random sample, but there is, there's always a chance that this sample might not accurately represent the population. And so there would be a margin of error. If I asked you guys questions about typical grade 11 students, okay, you guys might not be the great, a great sample because you're all in the same class, you all have the same teachers for the most part, you're in the same small school, right? So if I wanted to ask a, a group of 32 kids about life in grade 11 in the city of Regina, probably what I would do is not just ask you guys. I would take a sample, one from each school maybe, right? Or a couple, two or three from each school. But that still wouldn't represent maybe perfectly well all of the grade 11 students, let's say, in the province if I'm trying to make an estimation of what their life is like. Do you see what I'm saying? So there's always a little bit of a margin of error if you take a sample. And so that margin of error is usually stated as, like right here, plus or minus a percent, something like that. So if it's 76%, they're saying plus or minus 4%. So it could be anywhere from 72% to 80%. Okay. Now obviously if that margin of error is smaller, there's more confidence that we have uh, an accurate representation there, right? If it's really large, that means really <laughs> we don't have any idea. You know, 76% plus or minus 20%. Okay, well, that means they don't really have, they're not really very confident at all that this data is correct. So the margin of error. Now the confidence interval would be what I just mentioned, this 72, the low end of what this possibly could be, and the high end right here. So that's the confidence interval from 72 to 80. So margin of error is the, the value plus or minus this percent, that's the margin of error, the, the four percent. The confidence interval would be from the actual percent low end to high end. Does that make sense? Is that okay? All right, so the, that's, that's those two things. Those two things are pretty straightforward. The confidence level is a bit tricky. Like, why do they have to say uh, in this, you know, the results are accurate to plus or minus four percentage points, 19 times out of 20? Why do they have to add that? Why can't they just say plus or minus four percent? So there's an extra level of information here. The confidence level of this survey is 19 times out of 20, which is 90%, 95%. So they're saying that 
the, uh, the real percentage is between 72 and 80, and we say that that's probably 95% true. So there is a chance that it could be lower than 72. There is a small chance it could be higher than 80, but they are 95% sure that the actual value is between 72 and 80. Does that make sense? So here's my answer, 76 has a bit of a margin of error because of the sample size or whatever. So it could be 72. It, it could be 80. And I'm confident of that range, 19 times out of 20, 95% sure about that range. Does that make sense? So you have your value, your stated value. You have a margin of error. You have a confidence interval. And you have the confidence level that that interval is accurate. Does that, does that make sense? Are we getting that? Yes? No? Sort of? Probably? Maybe. I know you're all processing, right? These blank stares I'm getting is like, yeah, I'm thinking about that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm hoping, okay. I'm thinking about the volleyball game last night. No. Nope. Okay. Okay, so, um, yeah. So, let's see. Okay, so we'll, we'll continue on here. Okay, what do they say about this? Uh, so, 95%. 72 to 80. Okay. So if, what's, what's 92,500? Where does that come from in this question? Did I miss that? 600 randomly people. So that's maybe the entire population, I'm assuming. 92,500. They took 60, 600 out of that. So probably if this is the entire population, they, they said that 76% of those would probably have a networking account. That is 70,300. And the, the margin of error is actually about 3,700 people. So it could be, you know, uh, 74,000. Uh, it could be less, less than that, 3,700 less. So that's the interval. Okay, right here. So 66,6 and 74,000. 95% confidence that the actual number is between 66,600 and 74,000 people. I apologize for the 666 there. Wow. Actually, I don't. It wasn't up to me. Wow, I know, Eva. Wow. Okay. Anything else? Any questions on that? Okay. So the confidence interval from a percent can actually be calculated if you're given the population total. Okay, I'll say that again. If you have 76% of an actual total, you can actually find out how many people that represents. Okay. So we can figure out how many of these people do not have a networking account, and so on. Okay. All right. Um, from that example, um, that's, a, that's a bunch of it already. There, there are other examples here that we can um, do different sorts of things. What does this one say? This one says, uh, example three here. Let's take a look at this. It says, to meet standard regulations, baseballs must have a mass of 142 grams to 149 grams. Okay. How many of you watch the World Series? Uh, just the World Series of the... The 2017 World Series, Houston and LA, right? One of the best series ever. Some of those games were amazing. Anyway, so fitting that we just talk about baseball right after that. But anyways, and actually there's a bit of controversy with the balls too. Did you know that? <laughs> Some of them say the, the baseballs are uh, juiced a bit. They're actually, because everybody's hitting them so much farther this year. But I don't know. Yeah, so a manufacturing company sets its production equipment to create baseballs that have a mean mass, an average, of 145 grams. Okay, all right, so 142 to 149, that's seven, so add about three to the low end, okay, that's, that's the average, that's where they want to hit, okay. To ensure that the production equipment continues to operate as expected, the quality control engineer, when you hear quality control, that means uh, every once in a while they take an actual sample and just to try to measure it, see what's going on. Um, if some of them are, too many of them are way out of ballpark, then they have to readjust their equipment or whatever, out of the ballpark, okay. Sorry about that pun. Um, it's pretty punny, but... I thought so anyways. If the mean mass of the random sample is between 144 and 145, then the production equipment is running correctly. See that? So that's the quality control there. If the mean mass of the sample is outside this acceptable level, the production equipment is shut down and adjusted. All right, so that's the situation. The quality control engineer refers to the chart shown on the next page when conducting random sampling. Okay. So sample size needed. If they take 110 uh, baseballs and measure them, their confidence level is 99%. They are 99% sure that their equipment is working correctly. 
If they take a fewer number and test those, they have a smaller confidence level and so on. Okay. So we could, we could ask, uh, ask questions about confidence intervals, margin of error, and so on, given the data in the question. Okay? So the confidence interval of the, of the tester is this. Uh, margin of error okay, would be the difference uh, between the, the mean and the upper limit and the mean and the lower limit. So the margin error, 0.3 grams. So for A. Okay. And I'll let you, uh, I'll let you, uh, you know what, I'll let you take a minute and just read through the rest of that, uh, that uh, question just quietly, okay? So some of you will need to spend a little more time on that. Just, I'll ask you just to sort of just be quiet and, and, and read that example and the solutions for a, for a minute. If you have any questions, you can ask after that time. So let's take a look at example four. Analyzing statistical data to support a position. So this one's about a poll that was conducted to ask voters the following questions. If an election were held today, whom would you vote for? The results indicated that 53% of the vote uh, was for Smith and 47 would vote for Jones. So you might stop right there and just say, okay, well, it's a, obviously, you know, Smith's going to win. The results were stated, of course, because this was a sample, as being accurate within 3.8 percentage points, 19 times out of 20, the question is, who will win the election? At face value, you look at 53% for Smith and 47 for Jones, and you just say Smith. But if you take a look at the possible error that's involved here, there's actually a, conf a confidence interval, right? So if you look at this graph, this is very telling right here. This is what this sort of stuff means. This is the implications on you and I. Smith obviously has an average here, right, of higher than Jones. But... Because of the nature of the stats, there is an interval or a range where, you know, they could be accurate, but eh, look at this overlap part, okay? So there is a chance in this data reporting that Smith's actual value is somewhere down here. And there's actually a chance that even though Jones was stated as whatever, 47 there, there's an actual chance that the real number when it comes down to it could be up over here. So because the two confidence intervals overlap, all right, uh, basically, you would say that, yeah, Smith is probably most likely to win because if you look at you know, this area, there's a big chance that his numbers are actually here, big chance that Jones' numbers are actually here. But you have to admit the fact that there could be a chance um, you know, that it could be switched around, right? That uh, Jones could actually win. Oh. Okay. Oh, question on that? Yeah. Why is there overlap? Okay, good question. Um, there would be overlap because, he, so for Jones, we have 47% of the voters, but that's plus or minus 3.8%. So if you add 3.8% to 47, you get this 50.8%. So you see that's the end of the red line right there. So that, that's, that they're saying that that could be the number. It could be at, up as high as that. And then for Smith, although he's projected to have a higher you know, approval, you know, the, the margin of error could be as low as 3.8% under that. And so that's where the beginning of the blue line is here at 49.2. Okay, does that answer your question? Yeah. Could you add the 3 .8 um, Could you add the 3.8 to this? Yeah. Oh, yes. So it's, it could be as high, see, as 53 plus 3.8. So it could be as high as 56, which is the end of the blue line right here. It could be as low as subtracting that from 53 or this one. Does that make sense? I'm realizing I'm saying does that make sense a lot these days. Yes. It's like one of those things that I am now realizing. I'm actually just realizing that I am saying that all the time. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Do you guys notice that or no? Yeah. Now that I say it, that makes sense? I mean, <laughs> that was on purpose. Okay. Okay, that was your lighthearted moment, okay? Now back to work. Oh. Okay, um, so please take another moment to read through the in summary. Okay, the key ideas that need to know. Can you just do that? Because, I mean, if I just read through it and drone on some more, you're, more of you are going to fall asleep. Okay, so just, just read it on your own. No, don't read it together. It's not story time. We're not going to gather in the corner and... <laughs> 
Yeah, that's actually a funny thought, actually, me, me with the book. Okay, kids. Uh, it's often impractical, <laughs> if not impossible, to obtain that. No, I'm not going to do that. Hmm. Oh my God, it's Disturbing. No, I can't actually do I, I actually just did that for a second. I'm not, you can read it on your own, okay? So go ahead. 